To help you improve your different web pages on your Chamber website, I'm going to teach you a little bit about on page SEO. Now, this is a term that you can go Google to learn more in depth about later on. There are multiple types of SEO, which is search engine optimization. And I'm going to focus on on page because it's a little less technical and it has some things that are easier for almost anybody to do. So basically with on-page SEO, we want to make small little tweaks when editing our web pages that will help it be found on Google. Since we want to be seen as a local resource, then we probably want to be found on Google and show up as much as relevantly possible so that more people find us and are on our website so we can help as many people as possible. So this is a checklist. This is a great page to actually screenshot. And I'm going to talk a little bit about all of these, but to quickly skim through just this slide, we're going to use keywords in our slug, which is our URL. So instead of the easy West slash numbers, jargon, blah, 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 whatever, we're going to put something that makes sense that uses words, especially our keyword or key phrase like the easywest.com slash on page SEO. So that way, when somebody gets to our site, we don't think it's a sketchy or a random web page. We know it's a real page just because it has real words. And it also helps Google know that that is an important phrase. We're also going to use that keyword in our title, our heading, our first paragraph, and our description, which is like your meta description. I'll show you where some of those are. And we also want to make our entire web page as easy as read to possible. This is not usually a problem for Chambers. And then if you're going to add images, try to reduce the file size. You can do this by going to a website for free called tinypng.com, upload your photo, then re-download it. It will look the same, but it will be a smaller file size, which will actually help your web page load faster. This is great for people because we're impatient. And if a web page takes longer than three seconds, definitely longer than a second, a lot of people will click away and just go try to find something else. It's great for the size of your website, but also just for people. And then having your keyword in the file name and filling out your alt tag. Your alt tag is, I think, screen reader for the blind. So you're going to make it sound like it makes sense if you are reading it out loud or describing that picture to another person. Again, I'll show you an example of where that's located. And if you're looking at your settings or metadata or anything else, basically always fill out any optional settings that you can. Not many people do it, so it is a low hanging fruit for you. Like I said, we want it to be easy to read. The thing that Chambers can work on is using more headings tags. I see a lot of people delete these because you maybe take out as much as possible or be plain or simple or just not as much text. But in some cases, this can actually hurt you because your H1 tag is actually explaining what the web page is about. So you're hurting your on-page SEO. And you can also break up walls of text. And sometimes Chambers are pretty good about this. And that might be adding an image or embedding your flip book in between large paragraphs of text. Or it could just be using more bullet points or making things skimmable, like using bold or italicized text. We also want to include relevant links. This is definitely something I think most Chambers could definitely, definitely work on. And I'm going to have an example for you, but basically link to other web pages on your site when it's relevant and then try to use a phrase or words that describe that page instead of saying click here unless you're doing that for a reason or just having trouble it's fine but when you can try to use the anchor text and of course if you link to anything that goes to another website which is outbound if it goes to another website or if it goes to a file link or even if it's something you own but on a different website like if it's a constant contact survey you still want to check the box that says open link in new tab and then also think about what you want the reader to do next and i have a great example for that but if you're looking at a web page and they get the information they wanted okay great if you don't tell them what to do next or provide the next relevant web page, they're going to close the tab. And you probably want to keep people on your website for as long as possible and visiting as many web pages as possible. So let's talk a little bit about keywords first. And before I move forward, I want to point out that with search engine optimization, a keyword can actually be a phrase like your city name. So Myrtle Beach 
can be a single keyword, just like Myrtle can be a keyword, Beach can be a keyword, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina can be a single keyword. And one way we can do this is to just use that keyword more. So on the left-hand side is what the web page used to look like. It was a utilities page for Reedsville, North Carolina. They had some logos and some basic contact information. Now, I did not delete any information. They're still providing the same information, if not more. I've just reorganized it to make use of headers, which is the bigger text. Um, you can think of chapter titles, if that helps. But when you're editing a web page, when you change the text above paragraph, it'll have things like header or H1, H2. You only have one H1, which is just describing the entire web page, whereas H2 or heading two is more like a chapter title. So you, you can see I've used um, keywords to describe the utility information that was already provided. So the first piece of information was City of Reedsville Water Department, which people were actually Googling. So now this web page is showing up for people Googling City of Reedsville Water Department. It's showing up for people Googling for City of Reedsville NC Trash Pickup, Reedsville Recycling Collection and Dropoffs. That you get the point. So it can feel redundant, but this actually helps you show up on Google a little bit more. Now, if you're not sure which keywords to use, just start with the obvious ones. Look for obvious words or phrases, even if it feels redundant. So on the previous page, I told you, instead of just saying utilities, we could try Reedsville, North Carolina utilities. Instead of about the chamber, we could try saying about the Reedsville Chamber of Commerce. Instead of marketing opportunities, we could try marketing opportunities for Reedsville, North Carolina businesses. Instead of community guide, we could try Reedsville, North Carolina community and visitors guide. So even though we're still providing the same information on our web page, we're increasing the likelihood of us showing up in search results for people looking for information about our communities. Now, if you want to try and get a little bit more technical, you can install Google Search Console or the other brands like Bing Webmaster Tools and install the code on your website, similar to how you would Google Tag Manager or Analytics, stuff like that. I will admit it is a little bit of a pain the first time. I don't know why, but once it's in there, you're done and you're good. If you have installed Google Search Console, when you log in, if you go to Performance, Underneath queries, it's actually showing me some different search terms, aka queries, that people have Googled that I have shown up for in the search results. So we had a lot of impressions for Reedsville NC, which makes sense because that's where this chamber was located, and we got some clicks. If I wanted to convert more of those impressions and get more clicks, then I would probably need to do some on-page SEO editing where I'm using the phrase Reedsville NC more often. This is again using headers. H1 is the title. This is about the page. You would likely then put an intro of what the page is about unless it's really short and obvious. That might be okay. I tend to do a lot of blog posts. I tend to follow a format more like this. H2 would be a subheading or if you're going to go into a little bit, de a little bit more detail about several different topics. Again, breaking up text, you could use bullet points, images, anything to just visually make it different and not an essay. Depending on the length of what you're talking about, you might make a final point or a conclusion. And yes, a call to action. I love calls to action. If you don't have anything you really want them to do, then just find another web page on your site to help promote. Next, metadata. Um, the short of this is to just fill out every setting and option you can find for every web page and trying to make it easy for the average person to read. So just like you want members to fill out all of the boxes when they're editing their business directory listing, there's also actually some similar boxes available for every web page on your site. So if you have Squarespace, this is what yours likely looks like. So we had clicked on page settings. We can see there's a few different options, general SEO, social image, media advanced. I would actually just click through every one and fill out anything you possibly can. We're currently looking at the general tab. We can see I've put in the page title, the navigation title. Now the URL slug, I will say, I would not change for old pages. I would change it if you're making a new web page, 
but if you're editing an existing web page, you would then have to set up a web page redirect so that any other places that are linking to that page would still go there. So for many of us, it's just not worth the extra effort. And I would leave old web pages alone just for the URL or slug. So for this particular web page, the URL would be chambersforinnovation.com slash North dash Carolina. For anything you're not really sure of, try to read the little helpful temp that they provide. And if you're not sure, then it's okay to skip. So for this example, it says enable page. Disabled pages can't be accessed by your site visitors. Well, I want website visitors to see this, so I'm going to leave it as enabled. This is kind of like an intermediate or advanced setting option. So if you're not sure, don't worry about it. Just skip it. But try to fill out the ones that feel kind of obvious or that you understand. Next, I'm going to show you where to find these same settings inside of WordPress. For this example, I'm going to assume you're using one of Chamber Master's newer web designs. So when I've logged in through Chamber Master and then I go to edit the website. At the top of the website, there is this black bar. You can see I've circled a button that says Edit SEO. Chamber Master has installed Yoast SEO, which if you're familiar with it, it's a WordPress plugin. So we've clicked Edit SEO. Now I'm on a web page called Reedsville North Carolina Sports, and I'm editing that page inside of WordPress. And when I scroll down, I will find a submenu for Yoast SEO Premium. And I want to click on the tab that says SEO. And down here, we can see the different options inside of Yoast SEO. And this is where I'm finding all of those settings for this specific web page. So I could edit the URL or slug. This is where I would add the meta description. And I like this version because where you see that orange bar, it's actually telling me that I've put in too many words. And so I would try to use less words to make it green. But this is the little paragraph or sentence that is showing up on Google when somebody is searching for a relevant term and this web page shows up. So like your business directory listings where it says search, I want to put something that makes sense that is easy for a normal person to read. Yes, I'm gonna still try and use the keywords. So I've tried to include Reidsville NC and sports in some way, but a normal person is reading this. I will then copy and paste that over on the right side. You can't see it right now, but there's another place that has description within the Word WordPress settings and I just copy paste it. While we're in here, also on the right hand side, we're still editing the same page. There is a button that says featured image. You can add an image here and that is what will show up when somebody shares your link on Facebook or on social media and you see that little image preview. And it's a lot of times like a blurry logo unless you've already added a, an image to that web page. So if you want to control what that looks like, you can add a particular image here. And when you do, when you go to upload an image, you would try to fill out these three boxes. The obvious is the title. That's usually something that I am searching for inside of my own media library, but also try to use a keyword because Google description usually pretty similar. And the one at the top is alt text. Now this is what a screen reader will read out. So if I've used any text, I do try to, on the image, I try to copy and paste the exact text that I used. Or if you want to just describe the image like you would to somebody that's blind, this is where you would do that. So try to play with the different settings, fill them out as best you can. Whenever you're done, you would hit save. All right, so we've talked a little bit about keywords. We've talked about adding images and just filling out all of the settings possible. Again, if it's too overwhelming, you don't have to do all of them, or if you don't quite understand a box, it's okay to skip a few. Try to find just one or two things to get better about. This, it's okay to baby step your way into this. I know this is a lot, especially if you're not really gung-ho about websites. Now, before we go, I wanna talk a little bit more about internal linking, which is when you link to another web page that is also on your site. So internal, it is inside your own website. So doing this will actually help people spend more time on your website, looking at more of your web pages, which is both useful to that person and it's a positive sign for Google. And of course, I like to report on positive numbers to our board. However, we want to be super relevant. We're going to link to highly relevant web pages. So 
For example, if we're looking at our benefits of membership webpage, I can link to any individual webpage that goes into more detail like marketing opportunities. So for this example, I've actually detailed several benefits of membership. For the second circle, you see I'm talking about legislative and public policy. I only put a brief explanation because this is a long page about all of our various benefits of membership. And then when they click on learn more, then it goes to our legislative and public policy webpage. So highly relevant, makes sense. They'll click through on the ones that they're most interested in. However, what I didn't do a great job of on that page is actually utilizing anchor text. So not just saying click here or learn more. Anchor text is whatever text that you click on and it links to something. So everything I've circled is anchor text. We wanna try and say what the link is. So on that first circle, we see business directory listing. You probably guessed it. When you click on it, you'll go to the business directory for that Chambers website. This is just a good best practice. Next, thinking about our next steps or a call to action. So a super simple one that many, many chambers do not do is on our pricing page or do structure, whatever you wanna call it, at the bottom of it, just putting a button or link to the join page or the application page. It's a simple step, so many of us skip. However, just thinking about, okay, what web page are we on? What is the next thing we want them to do? Don't expect them to go find it in the menu or whatever. Make it as easy as possible for them. Quick takeaways recap of what I've gone over. Fill out any settings whenever possible. Try to use longer, highly relevant phrases or keywords. So instead of beach, I would say Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That would be a longer, more relevant phrase. Keywords that will make it easier to show up on Google when someone is searching about your area. Some of the easiest changes for you to go back and edit on some of your existing web pages is to add headers with keywords. Using keywords in your first paragraph or just at least somewhere in the text of that web page linking to other web pages on your site when it makes sense. And then as a bonus tip, I kind of threw out, you know, if you're not ready to go back and tweak all of your web pages, I totally get it. That, that could be a big job. So just think about your top five or 10 most viewed web pages or most important web pages and just start with those. You don't have to do everything, just start with ideally 10, but if you're not even there yet, at least do five for me. However, I also threw in the caveat, this is not gonna include the chamber master modules like your job board or your hot deals because you do that in a different place.